Welcome to Living Arts. I'm your host, Jackie Suarez. Thank you for tuning in. I hope everybody's doing okay out there and enjoying this lovely winter that we're having. You know, we've got a great guest tonight. His name is Lance Johnson. He's a mixed media artist. Lance, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Yep, I'm delighted that you're here. You know, you've been doing some terrific work in the area and just have a fantastic career. So I think the best thing that we can do is just for our audience, we'll just start with giving us a little background on yourself. Okay. Um, I was born in the Bronx, New York. Uh, I um, didn't dabble in art when I was young. I was more into writing and poetry. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom, uh, when I was 14 years old, my mom gave me a, a VHS tape. I'm probably dating myself, but she <laughs> gave me a VHS tape of a documentary called I'll Make Me a World. Okay. And that documentary was about the Harlem Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with the imagery of Romeo Bearden, mm -hmm. the collage artist. I, um, I always felt like I was an artist in a writer's body, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't draw. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know the path or to navigate as an artist. But I always was drawn to his imagery. You know, he celebrated urban life, which I loved um, because I grew up in uh, the projects in the Bronx. And, you know, it wasn't really that much hope. Mm -hmm. in my community, um, but I always felt like I was bigger than that, you know what I mean? And um, when I saw his work and I saw how he um, celebrated the urban life and the um, quote-unquote ghetto, mm -hmm. I fell in love with that imagery and I wanted to like incorporate that in my work. So I started dabbling in cutting up magazines like Ebony and Jet mm -hmm. and creating these landscapes for myself and then I would never show them to anybody. I put them away, I, uh, I left them alone, and because um, I didn't know that if anybody would consider it art. The collage? Yeah, well, my format. collage okay. format. So um, uh, once I put them aside, I would like look at them sometimes and back off of them. And then um, like years passed, and then I decided to start showing my work. So you didn't really have any formal education, so to speak, in art? No, self-taught. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up listening to hip-hop music, which informs my work as well. Um, you know, the whole mix match of remixes and um, old, old beats, creating new beats. Um, and that's what I created my work with, it, with that mindset. Okay. So were you, when you would do a collage, were you trying to express some specific sentiment or were you thinking um, of, let's say, just kids playing in the park or dangerous hallways or was it something specific that you had in mind that you wanted to represent? Absolutely. I always wanted to celebrate the urban environment. Like, too often we're bombarded with negativity, right? So I would go outside and, you know, I, could, I would see the beauty in our neighborhood, um, not just the quote unquote drug dealers and all of these guys. The ugliness. Yeah, the ugliness. I would mm -hmm. see the beauty, I would see the families, I would see the neighborhood. And I wanted to incorporate that in my work because I felt like Romeo Bearden did that mm -hmm. in his work. Like he would celebrate uh, jazz musicians where, and they all looked beautiful, it was so vibrant and colorful and alive. Elegant, yeah. Exactly. And I wanted to create that with a hip hop feel. Mm -hmm. with a hip-hop edge to it. So I would um, do landscapes of uh, like the city, cityscapes, and mm -hmm. um, I would uh, incorporate a lot of vibrant colors and So this like is that. taking things from magazines or were you using some, some other materials? Yeah, I was using magazines, but I was also using um, like acrylic paints. Um, on and, top of the top cutouts? Of, uh, yeah, on top of the cutouts and layering, because Again, my work is all about layering and like remixing, mm -hmm. you know, like the hip hop. Um, so I would uh, take these images and use um, like markers and crayons and just different different elements. To give it different like texture. Yeah, different textures, different flavor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'd, we just were speaking before we were taping here that you consider Jean-Michel Basquet's work kind of one of the people that kind of informed your work. Were there any others? Absolutely. Um, again, uh, started with the Harlem Renaissance and then I discovered street art and graffiti. Mm -hmm. And that just blew my mind because it was right outside my door and it was, act it was art that I could see on a, every day uh, on a regular. And um, 
once I started seeing the graffiti in my neighborhood and appreciating it more, I wanted to research and see all the other street artists that I didn't realize. And then that's when I discovered Jean-Michel Basquiat. And I fell in love with the artist, you know, his art life, you know? Mm -hmm. I thought it was amazing how he just navigated both worlds, you know? Yeah. Fine art and street art. And he was just, he was just re reckless. And I loved that, you know? He had an edge to him. And right. Well, I mean, every, the attention that he received and just the life that he had was pretty remarkable. Yeah, he and made me fall in love with the art life. Everything you know? was really popping at that time, you know, because Andy Warhol and so many other people. Absolutely. What's the guy's name? Julian. Julian Schnabel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that he he was like the um, the the key to bringing downtown uptown and uptown downtown. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was awesome. I thought that, and I I kind of try to do that with my work. Like I, tr I've done a lot of commission work with corporate um, companies, mm -hmm. and I like the idea of putting my uh, graffiti elements in that context, you know, in an office building. Because you've got something over there, at Harlem 125. It's a residential. Yeah, I've worked with a um, company called Greystone Development, mm -hmm. and um, it's a luxury rental that they just put up on 125th Street. And uh, what we did was, I did a, a mural representing Harlem jazz, right? So it came full circle because this building is about three blocks from where my mom grew up mm -hmm. in Harlem. And um, my mother was just ecstatic. You know, she was just blown away because- She was they probably really up, proud of you too. Absolutely, because they grew up in poverty mm -hmm. and struggle. And to see this brand new building going up and her son's art in it was amazing. Yeah, it's a permanent artwork. I think you got 13 pieces, right? Yeah, what it was was it was a one large mural. It was five feet by 78 feet. Wow, that's big. Yeah, and then we cut it up mm -hmm. and put 13 pieces throughout the building. So every floor has about two, one or two pieces in it. So it was a great, great experience for me. I was so super excited. Yeah, no, and absolutely. And it was celebrating Harlem in Harlem, so it was a beautiful thing. Yeah, and to get just paid to do something like that, you know, is so important for an artist because it'll see you in paints for a year or, or more. Absolutely. If you know, if that, you know. I tell all. I like to tell artists all the time that, um, especially when I'm working with young people, mm -hmm. who they're always like, "Oh, I don't think art. I can do anything. Can you get paid with it?" And I'm like. First of all, art, money cannot be your motivation. Right. But if that if, were the case, go write some poetry, right? Exactly. You can't, you can't exactly, really paint. <laughs> exactly, right? But if you put your heart and soul into your work, mm -hmm. people will notice, you know? Right. And you put the work in, you, you reach out to people, and you use social media. Social media is, is brilliant when it comes to marketing. For It's free marketing. It's free if marketing. Used, if used properly, it can make or break people. Absolutely. And it's mm -hmm. cutting the middleman, and it's changing the whole game mm -hmm. of, uh, of artists because I, I'm not affiliated with any gallery, and it's my choice because there have been galleries that reached out to me, but social media has been amazing for me to build my uh, clientele and just... And you don't have to pay them the commission. Absolutely. That's a beautiful thing. Right. So then you, once you've got this collage, you know, uh, format working for you, um, where, where does that take you? And what's the evolution of, of, your, of your work? Yeah. So uh, when I built the courage to start showing my work, I decided I was like, man, I want to like look up group shows throughout the city. Um, so I started um, looking online and looking at different um, group shows where you could show your work with other artists. I figured I could meet new artists and try to build with them and figure it out. So I sent my sent images of my work online to different galleries. Oh, okay, so you need to be invited to be in the, in yeah, like the group show. Yeah. I was thinking to myself that it was more like, you know, a bunch of artists got together, they've got a space. I mean, that happens as well. You, and then f to participate, and that's how they pay for the space itself, and you just sell your, your wares. Yeah, so that happens as well, but there's also um, group shows that invite you to come in mm -hmm. free of charge, which is, I always try to look for those. Uh, yeah, right, free <laughs> you know? is me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and they allow you to sell your work, right? But for me, the whole goal was to meet different artists and be inspired by them, and of vice course. versa. So, um, I started doing that. I started building the courage to call myself an artist. I think that's important too because a lot of artists 
um, they don't call themselves an artist. And I feel like once you voice that, yeah. it becomes you. you because know? it's burdensome. It's Absolutely. like if I'm going to say that I'm an artist, it's like I will have to produce art, and I will have to have a body yeah. of work that people can refer to. Exactly, and people judge you like, oh, what does that mean? Like, and you just can't be you know, scratching your butt. You, know, you have to kind of be moving forward or it's, it's very involved. Absolutely, but for me, calling myself an artist made me, made it acceptable to just create, you know, mm -hmm. and just, and work towards building my clientele, which is important, and um, just throwing myself out there. Like I said, social media has been incredible because it gives you that marketing that you might not have, and people all over the world will see your work, you know, You're which has totally right. changed the game. That's so true. Yeah, I had a, a, a prime example was um, I did a piece and I, I um, had a show in Terrytown, a place called um, Muddy Water. It was a cafe, small cafe. And I had this piece that was celebrating New York and it was a heart. And it was a lot, a lot of layers, a lot of textures. It was a collage piece. And I posted it online on uh, social media, Instagram. And this guy reaches out to me from Hong Kong and he's like, oh, I saw this image that you posted and it looks like New York street art. Um, I would love to buy it. And we negotiated and he purchased it. He sent me PayPal. So it was all online, never met him. Mm -hmm. And now he's a collector. So now he reaches out to me all the time looking for work. That's so fantastic. So stuff like that, that mm -hmm. makes you appreciate the power of social media. The power, of social, the power media. of social media, the marketing, mm -hmm. it's amazing. So I just want to go over some of the shows that you've had or kind of some things that you've been involved with. Um, I mean, locally, I have you over here as being uh, the collaborative mural project at Woodside Elementary. Yes. Um, Tell that us was, about that. Absolutely. That was an amazing project that I did with um, three other artists. Uh, it was a large two-wall uh, mural celebrating the city of Peekskill. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> it's an elementary school, right? So we used about, it was probably about 300 students. Mm -hmm. um, and we created a river uh, of words with each student. So each student in the class created this river of words, right? So we had them each take one word that represents home or community and write it on a blue piece of paper and we incorporated all those blue pieces of paper on the mural mm -hmm. and it created the Hudson River. And we got words like namaste, love, um, mommy, stuff like that. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, and uh, it was a layered piece. It was right up my alley with the collage and mm -hmm. street art elements to it. And the kids love it. And it's now it's on their wall outside of their main office. So they can walk by every day and say, oh, that's my word, and that's my word, and it becomes a part of them. Right, and they can maybe turn on to like the artist in, in themselves. Absolutely, or... and, I, and the one rule that I have for all kids that I do um, art projects with, I tell them there's only one rule. There's no mistakes in art, right? And that's, the, that's my motto, right? Because I didn't go to school for it, so mm -hmm. I don't know what not to do. So I just try anything, you know? I'll paint on a door, you know? I'll, uh, you know, I'll pick up something outside and add it to my canvas. Mm -hmm. So I, there's no, for me, there's no rules, you know? So now can you say, you know, at this stage in the game that this is something that you are able to support yourself with what you've got going on with, your, you know, your gigs and you know, your art right now? Yeah, it's funny. It was about a year ago. Like I, I wasn't full time until about a year ago where um, I was working at a nine to five job. I was miserable. I hated it. Um, it was like a corporate job. I had to wear a, a suit and tie. I hated that. Um, but part time I was doing these commission work. I started getting more commissions. So I would work at my job from like say 8.30 to 5 p.m rip my tie off, rip my uh, shirt off, go downtown and go into a restaurant and create a mural till like three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I was loving that, that was beautiful, but then I would have to go back to work the next day and I was miserable. So one day I was uh, talking to one of my coworkers and she was like, uh, what are you doing here? She was like, you're too talented. What are you doing here? 
And I couldn't answer it. I was like, I don't know, you know? It's kind of the fear of letting go. It was go. the fear of letting go. And, and the whole idea for me was to take that jump. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the scariest thing in the world to take that leap. It's yeah, like a leap of faith. Both feet, exactly. Know? Both feet forward. And I did it. And right after I did it, it was just like a sigh of relief. And, and the whole world opened up. The too. whole world opened up. And but one thing that I tell everybody as well is to just voice what you want, right? So I was like, man, I want to travel with the art. And I've gotten some opportunities to travel to different mm -hmm. places that I never thought I would ever go. So that sounds once so fantastic. You take that jump, it's, that's mm -hmm. what it's about. So you've got, you do a lot of work with the HVCCA. Yes. Here in Peekskill. So why don't you kind of tell me what you've been doing with them and some things you have coming up. Okay. I met, um, well, the first time I went to uh, HVCCA, which I love, and I so fell in love. That's the Hudson Valley. Hudson Valley Con Center for Contemporary Art. There you go. Uh, I fell in love with Peekskill when I first got here. So let me break down when I, got, when I first met them. It was about three years ago. Um, I was looking for something cultural to do. I was online. And um, I didn't want to go into Manhattan because of traffic and parking and everything. So I looked in the Hudson Valley and I saw that they had an exhibit called the Love Exhibit. And it was during Valentine's Day. And I was like, oh, that should be cool. Let me do that. Let me go up there. I had never been there before. I hadn't really gone to Peekskill too much. Or known of the museum. It's or I knew that a museum existed here. Mm -hmm. So when I got here, um, the building, it looks like a factory outside. I go in and the world opened up. I felt like I was in Chelsea. Mm -hmm. The space is amazing. The art was just popping. Yeah, it's popping. got a great vibe. Yeah, it's just amazing. I fell in love with the space. And I was like, and again, once I, you voice things, right? I was like, I want to show my art here. I have to show my art here one day. So I met somebody that worked there and I gave him my card. I was like, I love this space and I would love to show my work here one day. And they were like, oh, thank you. I love, you. here's the card. I'll take the card. Thank you. And then um, like a couple of months later, they give me a call and they have an exhibit called the Word Exhibit, mm -hmm. which was an amazing exhibit of text-based art, which is right up my alley because all my work incorporates words, inspirational words, words like dream. Now, was that the one where they're uh, putting stuff on people's backs? Okay. That was part of it. That was part of yes. it, okay. But each piece in this exhibit, it was about 60 artists. Mm -hmm. And each piece incorporated a word or words in some, some form or fashion. So they gave me the, um, they gave me the, um, a huge wall on the right-hand side of the building. They said, just go crazy. They gave me total creative freedom to just create a piece large scale, which I had never done before. This was my largest piece to wow. date. And I was just blown away. And from then on, we've been family, you know? So I do a lot of art residencies with them in the mm -hmm. schools throughout Peekskill. So. And for those guys that don't know, you know, the museum is here in Peekskill. You have a great team over there. Absolutely. Olivia Strauss is the director of the museum. Yes. You got Mara Mills over there. She's been on the show. Um, just some great things happening over there, and if you have time, go check it out. Absolutely. They're doing amazing things in the city, and they like to incorporate um, young people into the museum to give them the opportunity to show. Like, I've done residencies in the high schools, mm -hmm. and we've had the opening of the art piece in the museum. So it's like you're giving these kids entrance into a museum that some of them have never been there and they're just completely inspired by the space. So when you do your residency, um, is there a particular school that you're working with or does it always, it kind of changes because the artists change obviously, or do they just have one basic relationship with you know, an institution and um, change the artist? Yeah, I've each That's kind of my understanding of it or I'm not getting that correct, right? Well, what it is is they try to like um, give different artists opportunities to work with the kids. Um, I've been blessed to work with most of the schools in Peekskill, so I've done elementary school, mm -hmm. I've done an alternative high school, Summit Academy, uh, mm -hmm. here in Peekskill, uh, which was an amazing opportunity. Where is that Summit um, like Academy? It's up the, I'm not sure. Is that a charter address. school? It's part, it's affiliated with the high school, 
but mm -hmm. it's uh, like a, a alternate alternative space for kids who feel left out or feel lost in that location in the main high school. Is it like similar to something like special ed or? It's not really special ed. I they think are it's, just it's, it's artistic It's more kids. concentrated for okay. them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's like kids who may feel like they're being uh, like bullied in the, in the oh, high okay. school. So they have they're this, uncomfortable it's in a, that yeah, area. Yeah, it's an alternative yeah. space. That's Bef great. Yeah, which is amazing. And the kids in there were unbelievable. There was, a, it's a, probably about 70 kids throughout the school. Mm -hmm. And um, we created a, that residency, we created a piece called the Wall of Inspiration, where I had them all each put a word that inspires them. It could be a word, it could be a song lyric, it could be a picture, anything you want. Just place it on the canvas. Put a little piece of your soul on the canvas. Mm -hmm. And some of the kids were like, oh, I'm not an artist and I don't do this art thing. And I was like, just try it. And they did and they all fell in love with the process, which is key to me. I want them to fall in love with the process of art, right? Just creating, have fun, no limits, no, no rules. And there's, there's just like more studies saying that, you know, kids that are involved in dance or kids that are in, well, specifically I went to a talk about dance education in schools, in public schools. I think there's something like 100, I want to say 188 schools in Manhattan mm -hmm. or, with, you know, in that area. And how important that is to have, on, you know, in the curriculum for all the students, even if they're not going to be the best dancer in the world or be professional dancers, just to create a more well-rounded person. Absolutely. I mean... So I think the same thing can be said for just art education, period. For sure. I mean, people learn differently, right? So some, mm -hmm. some people learn visually. Right. So if they're able, or some people learn by being hands on. Right. So it, art to me is so valuable. In and of itself, In just the of appreciation itself. of it Absolutely. and also just being an artist. Absolutely. Like you said, just being a well-rounded person. So was your first your first solo show post no ills? Yes. Tell me about that. The whole idea of post no ills for me is. I can see it on your arm. I, you know, yeah, you felt strongly absolutely. about it. <laughs> well, for me, this is, it's part of like my introduction to street art, right? Because if you walk down the street in New York City, you'll see a construction site and you'll see the post no, post bills. no bills. Why didn't I make that connection? Right? So I thought, I, and my work is always about celebrating the mm -hmm. urban environment, right? So there's no Seeing negativity. The yeah, there's no negativity. There's all inspirational words that I use that I um, embed in all of my pieces. Um, so that's the whole idea with post no ills. It's mm -hmm. all about inspiration. It's all about positivity mm -hmm. and just changing that narrative of the urban environment. Well, that, that sounds like it was a great um, show. And, you know, we've kind of run out of time a little bit here, but I wanted to let the audience know that, you know, you're doing something with the Youth Bureau here in Peekskill. Absolutely. That their kids can be a part of. And you're with the HVCCA. Yep. And mention anything else that you have coming up in the next couple of months. Okay. I'm doing, um, I guess, I'm doing another residency with the middle school this time mm -hmm. um, in, in Peekskill. Um, also, I'm working with... Um, Another new era creative, which is uh, oh, no, Riz company Rizwan. Rizwan. Yeah. I'm working with Rizwan and doing a project with the girls there, a porch self portrait project. I love working with with uh, students, young people. Yeah. yeah, young people because you know I feel like the future, the future is here. So um, I'm doing a self portrait with them. I'm also doing a self portrait project with the young men in um, Peekskill, uh, part of the um, My Brother's Keeper uh, grant, which I'm excited about. I'm looking forward to that. Which organization is that a part of? That's what New Era Creative Oh, okay, got well. you. Mm -hmm. um, and in a couple, couple, of month, uh, couple of weeks from now, I'm going to Syracuse. I'm working mm -hmm. on a project with the city of Syracuse. Uh, it's called The Soul of Syracuse, and I'm going to be painting a, a bridge overpass for them. So I'm that excited about exciting. that. That's Hopefully it'll be nice and warm when you yeah, do that. Yeah, well, hopefully. We're trying to wait till it gets a little warmer. Yeah, it's you don't important. want to be outside no, you know, when it's no, too no, cold. No, 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 no. But, um, yeah, and then I'm doing another project in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, I'm doing a project with a nursery out there. I'm doing a mural project for them in their garden. 
um, it's, trying it's, to stay busy, you know. It sounds like you are. Absolutely. You know, and uh, let us know what's your email address so they can contact you if they, you're, they're interested in purchasing your art or, Absolutely. you know, what's the best way to get a hold of you. Yeah, my email address is ljart3093 at gmail.com. Awesome, awesome. There's so much information that's on the, the website. Absolutely. There's so many things that you have going on. And, you know, just thank you for your contribution to the community, yeah. trying to share your art, you know. So we want you to be, you know, doing really well. Hopefully Open Studios, you'll come and be here for Open absolutely, Studios. Absolutely, absolutely. I love the city of Peekskill. I love the energy here. I love the art energy here. And I love what you're doing. This is amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. I absolutely. appreciate that. Definitely. Thanks again for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Okay, people out there, um, I hope you enjoyed getting to know Lance. Um, he's got a lot going on, very talented. Um, definitely support him in any way you can. Go check him out if you can. Buy his art if you can. Mm -hmm. And we will look forward to having more shows for you, and we will talk to you soon. Peace. What in, in, inspires you? People inspire me. I am a writer and I, I'm fascinated by people's stories and relationships where everyone comes from. Music, music inspires me. Every genre, there's something that you can take from every piece of music. My inspiration is traveling. I've been to at least 20 countries and it's just the colors, the smells, the music, the people, the culture. My son and my daughter inspires me. My daughter is three, my son is six, and their wisdom at such a young age just inspires me. Beautiful sky, artwork in a museum, just the outdoor sounds of nature, because it brings out a better view. What inspires me is the fact that I'm able to express myself through art. Um, I dabble in all different types of art, such as photography, sculpting, graffiti, uh, you name it. Intuition, um, whatever grabs the attention of my tunnel vision, whether it tastes good or feels good or just whatever, if it's by touch or in my mind. What inspires me is my son. Just living here in New York City inspires me. I mean, going back and forth on the train, uh, you can see so many people and their eclectic styles and how they pair things together. It's just simply, it's amazing just watching people and people and people and people and people. And people, and people, and people.